Good evening, everyone. It's uh, Father Bob Gross, and this is my second uh, video of the day, which is a first for me. Uh, so I'm speaking to you from my office, and uh, I got my homily done for the weekend. And this weekend, I'll be in Holy Rosary Cluster, based in Elma, and um, I'm switching with Father Mark Murphy. He'll be preaching in our parishes, uh, because I'm going out there to preach and begin a parish mission for the five parishes in Father Murphy's cluster. So here's the homily that I came up for their community and for the beginning of the mission. It is um, directed at them as we begin the mission, kind of the first part of the mission is the homily that I'm giving. But I really hope uh, you can uh, derive some spiritual benefit from this as well. For those who are in my parishes, you, you probably recognize the theme that I'm talking about. I I guess I just think that the most important things have to be repeated. So just for your reference, um, the scripture readings for uh, this weekend are Ezekiel 37, 12 to 14, Psalm 130, Romans chapter 8, verses 8 to 11, and the Gospel of John chapter 11, verses 1 to 45. It's the raising of Lazarus. That's the gospel today. So um, hope you listen. I hope you share. Uh, for those folks in my parishes, I, if you're up to it, um, make a trip out to the mission. Sunday night is in New Haven, St. Peter's in New Haven, 6.30 p.m. Uh, Monday night is Immaculate Conception Church in Elma. And then um, the last day is Tuesday evening at 6.30 p.m. in uh, Immaculate Conception Church in Riceville. So there you go. Hope uh, you get something from this homily. So first of all, greetings and blessings to you. My name is Father Bob Gross, and it's a joy to be with all the folks here from Holy Rosary Cluster. I remember coming to your parishes when I would help Father Steve Garner with his Easter Masses for those couple of years. Just think, at the holiest time of the year is when we have shared the Eucharist together. I'd say that's a good start in getting to know one another. First things first, I'm here this weekend and for the next three nights to lead the cluster in a parish mission of three reflections on what it means to be a Christian who prays. Basically how. We're told to pray, but are we really taught how to do it and what to expect? And I'm here for only one purpose, and God willing, the one purpose that every priest would have, and that is to help you to serve you in knowing more deeply the God of Jesus Christ who has saved us from sin and death. I'm not here for a fundraiser. I'm not here to tell you how to get your act together. I'm not here to talk about the problems of our world. I'm not here to talk about the crisis of family, of marriage, of life, of vocations, of the concerns that we have in our lives. Today, in the evenings that we are together, I want to talk about and reflect with you about solutions. I don't want to talk about problems. I don't want to speak to you about gloom. I want to speak to you about hope. I don't want to speak to you about the evil of our hearts. I want to speak to you about the deeper goodness in each of our souls that God has given us by virtue of our baptism and how that goodness needs to be seen more clearly in our lives if we are to be faithful to Christ. Because the only way that we can navigate the world that we live in, the only way that the gospel can be made credible, the only way that goodness can find a home in our world, the only way that our parishes can survive and thrive is by focusing on the most important relationship in our lives, our friendship and relationship with Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The more we know Jesus, the more we are familiar and experience his grace in our lives is really what makes all the difference. If we do not experience his love in our daily lives, our faith grows weak and lukewarm. If we are not sustained with his love each day, our love for one another grows cold. If we do not see him as the most important person in our life and see all other relationships in light of our friendship with Jesus, then we will not experience the joy and happiness that the Lord Jesus promises in the Sermon on the Mount. 
That's my prayer for everyone this weekend and these three nights that we will be together. That's my prayer for everyone who is here right now, for those who have given up for their faith, for those that don't come very often. That's my prayer for every person, that they may be moved by the love of Jesus to make him the number one reason for their lives. I say all this because the last three Gospels that we have heard from the Gospel of John show how Jesus can change everything. Look at the movement of Jesus' great miracles in the Gospel of John, and you see the goodness of Jesus. You see the strength of Jesus. You see what he offers is what fulfills the holes in our hearts. You see how he is the one person you want to know before every other person, before every other thing, before every other reality and pleasure and honor you would want. Jesus is the reason. Jesus has to be our everything. Two Sundays ago, we heard the story of the person who was looking for love in all the wrong places. The Samaritan woman was a woman who was looking for love. We are all the same, no matter how macho or distant we are in life. We were meant for love. And the story of the Samaritan woman is the story about all of us, men and women. There are so many instances where we think we have found true love and then we are burned and then we're disappointed, we are betrayed. We sometimes put ourselves in the hot, scorching sun with no help and we are trying to satisfy our thirst alone. But then Jesus enters our lives and he satisfies our thirst by the authentic love that he has for us. He knows our every thought, our every word, our every sin. He knows our fidelity. He also knows our infidelity and that Jesus asks, give me a drink. Jesus thirsts for our love because he himself is true love. The woman walks away and tells everyone that she has found true love in the most unexpected place. You see how it changed everything for her? Has the same happened for you? Last Sunday, we see the blind man have his sight restored. Isn't that all of us? Don't we live in blindness many times? We are born into a world that isn't the way it's supposed to be. It's off kilter and we have to navigate this world. And because we sometimes look for love in the wrong places, we can sometimes be blinded from the truth that will truly liberate us. Isn't that some of us? Isn't that all of us at one point in life? There can be Christians who can go to Mass every Sunday for their whole life and not really meet the fullness of who Jesus is. There is the moment in life when Jesus has to put clay in our eyes to help us truly see the goodness and the life he is calling us to. He says, while I, am the, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Is Jesus the light of your life? Today we have Jesus raise his good friend Lazarus from the dead. All of us face the reality of death and corruption and illness. It is something we cannot avoid. And in Lazarus, we see how Jesus treats his good friends. He weeps for the pain that they go through. He comforts those who suffer and mourn. He brings life where there is death. In Lazarus, we see the foretaste of how the Lord Jesus wants to relate with all of us. He wants to be with us. He wants to comfort us. He wants to bring life to us where we can only see finality and death. Do you know the power of Jesus' life in you? My brothers and sisters, the way for us to experience the true love, the true light, and the eternal life of Jesus Christ personally is the life of prayer. Behind every great saint, there was a radical and loving prayer relationship with Jesus. Behind every faithful husband or wife, there is the desire to be in union with Christ. Behind every good homily by a priest, there is a living and loving relationship with Christ. Behind every courageous act for the truth, there is the relationship of prayer. The church will not be renewed only with programs. The church will be renewed and sustained when every follower of Christ falls in love with Jesus more and places his love and his relationship with him first above all else.
We can't do that without a real and living prayer life. So how do you do that? That's what this week will be all about. I hope the goodness of who Jesus is and what we have seen him do these last three Gospels, these last three Sundays, move you to sacrifice some precious time to give God a chance to woo you into the adventure and love of deeper prayer life. Everybody is invited. The question is, will, will you take the Lord up on his invitation? I'd like to close with a famous quote of Father Karl Rahner, who described what the Church of the Future will need to be. He wrote this 50 years ago this year. So he's speaking about us. Consider this, and I close with his words. The devout Christian of the future will either be a mystic, one who has experienced the realness of Jesus, or he will cease to be anything at all. Let's be mystics now, my brothers and sisters, and be the church of the future now. Thanks for listening, especially to all the Holy Rosary Cluster members. Please come to the mission Monday, Tuesday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday evenings at 6.30. The information is probably in your bulletin. And may God bless my folks. Know of my prayers for you this weekend. Peace.